more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, Top billing. Looking at Seattle's first depth chart they released, and we'll start with the offense here. Listen, I already said it before. Your Seattle Seahawks should have a top five offense in the NFL, no doubt about that. Uh, all things go right, meaning the inside of that offensive line comes to fruition. Uh, definitely should be a top three offense. I mean, not really much you can say bad about it, right? Uh, you got two guys on the outside and DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, who we know are tried, true, and proven there. And you add in a cat like Jackson Smith and Jigba. Mine Jigba. I expect him to have a very good rookie season there, especially with those two guys on the outside. And obviously you can miss mix and match and have those guys flip each other's roles and all that there. Just having Jackson Smith and Jigba with the type of ability that he has, or we think that he has, right? The potential there to be a Geno Smith type receiver who will be accountable. Meaning he can be on exact markers that Geno Smith expects him to be on. Geno, super accurate quarterback, rhythm and timing type cat. Somebody with route responsibility, right? <laughs> He's route responsible. Your man Jackson Smith and Jigba fits in good. Beyond that, man, oh, come on now. The running game's gonna be nasty. Kenneth Walker, one of the one of the bright spots last year as a rookie, only gonna get better. And then he has guys coming behind him, right? And Kenny McIntosh, right? You see him right there. Uh, with the 2B or whatever, or with DJ Dallas there. Obviously, that'll change. Zach Charbonnet get healthy. That should be him right behind there. But Kenny McIntosh, DJ Dallas right in the fray. That's a very, very solid running back rotation from a talent standpoint. Nothing to it but to do it, though. We can't totally say what rookies will be until we see them do it, right? So we can only go by prognostication. My prognostication for Kenny McIntosh is to be damn good just like he was at Georgia, straight up there. So uh, death-wise there, uh, D. Eskridge missing those games there, that's that's going to be tough on them there. You better hope uh, they can come in, the, come in there with someone else or someone else steps up in camp, one of those young guys or something like that. Way down there at number 81, Tyjon Lindsey, a cat that I covered in high school. Uh, out there when I was covering the USC Trojans. And he's a real shifty cat, fast cat, man. Uh, he kind of got lost in the sauce in college, though, but I just remember the type of cat that he was, um, kind of like a D. Eskridge type. So I don't know. Uh, Derek Young, people were talking about him all the time. Maybe it's his time to go ahead and step up and show himself to be uh, what he can be, though. But let's flip it over to the most important side of the ball, right? All right, one hand washes the other, both wash the face. It's a team sport, but we know if the defense makes a significant improvement, Seattle should go pretty far, right? So with that being said, if you look up and down this defensive roster here, they're creating depth, uh, they're fitting to that scheme, right? So obviously we can see now it is a 3-4 scheme. So all the people who kept coming, they're going to run a 4-3. You don't know what you're talking about and all this and that. I don't know what I'm talking about because it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. It had to do with all you had to do was look at the guys that they were drafting. Clearly, we're drafting for a 3-4 base defense there. They were releasing it as a 3-4 base defense. I said you wouldn't want to have these ton of these edge players like that and then run a 4-3 because these guys are smaller. They're shorter. You don't have that type of length. This is a 3-4 defense. I like how this looks right here on paper. No doubt about that. We start... On the outside, obviously, you chin the also. We obviously inch, entrenched as a starter there. Got his bag as well. But look at Boye Moffitt. What did I say? Sometimes, right? It's the answer. Are, the answers are already on the test, right? Boye Moffitt. He's, his first year, man, was very solid. What about a second year, a second year jump, right? Daryl Taylor, right? Just I will. Take note that this is just the first depth chart here. This could be a motivating thing, right? Sometimes you release these things. Somebody sees their name, uh, not where they want to see it at, and it motivates them. So Boye Mafe over Daryl Taylor, the start. Uh, maybe that's a base down thing right there. We know Daryl Taylor can straight rush the passer, but I believe Boye Mafe can rush the passer too, and I believe him to be very similar to Uchenna Nuosu. Uh, you got Derek Hall there on the second team there. Uh, so that's a pretty nice four-man rotation at edge outside linebacker. The sticking point, 
I, well, hold on. I, I'll, I'll go beyond that, right? Devin Bush and Bobby Wagner. Devin Bush, first round draft pick. One of the, my favorite linebackers that I got to see in college. Devin Bush was that guy, man. I love how he played football in college. Uh, not so much in the NFL after his injury and all that. But, man, maybe that's over with. And being next to a Bobby Wagner, uh, it's worth his weight in gold there. So not much notable depth beyond those guys, though. Obviously, Jordan Brooks, when healthy, would be where Devin Bush is. So that would create a little bit of depth there. And um, guys beyond that, though. So the secondary, Julian Love and Quandre Diggs both starting. So remember, Pete Carroll was telling the truth on this, right? Some people were saying, no, Julian Love will be the nickel. I was like, Pete talked about a – Coach Carroll talked about a three-man rotation at safety and deploying more of a big nickel look. Julian Love, Quandre Diggs, and then when Jamal Adams is healthy, there you go. That's nasty. Then you add in a Tariq Woolen on the outside, right? Michael Jackson, who I think – you know what I'm saying? I think Michael Jackson is, is is serviceable, maybe above average type. I need to see more from Michael Jackson. Just like when I cover him in college as well at, at the Rivals.com Miami site, right? Kingsport.com. I thought Michael Jackson was feast of famine. He would make some great plays, and then all the times I'm like, damn, Michael Jackson's struggling out here, right? If he can be more consistent there, that's pretty good. No doubt about that there. Uh, obviously seeing Kobe Bryant behind Julian Love as strong safety lift, listed there, uh, yeah, that's 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 strange. <laughs> that's strange right there, right? Um, maybe just because they're not listing a nickel back, right? They're just doing it from a base down. So what did I say, right? You draft somebody at number five on a team and put him in a sub package role it just looks weird so if they wanted to list their three four defense here the obviously you can't list a nickel defender that means your number five overall pick is playing behind someone like michael jackson who's a bit of a journeyman that could be said right that could be like michael jackson is that guy right if he ends up being that guy then it is what it is there but you would expect the guy that high to be able to beat out a michael jackson that's just my opinion on that right there but placing him at the nickel then that opens stuff up you get your best players on the field at least the guys who you feel are your best players right there i still have to see it i'm not so sure devin witherspoon is better than kobe bryant Oh, that's just me being me there. Uh, he has to prove that on the field. I thought Kobe Bryant very serviceable, and I think playing that nickel position is uh, is kind of hard anyway, right? Yeah, the fruits of your labor is not always seen there, but being one of these guys who can create create havoc, uh, Kobe Bryant can obviously do that. Uh, maybe Devin Witherspoon will be a, a upgrade over him if he is. That's that's nasty. So, but I don't see where you would play Kobe Bryant at with a healthy Quandre Diggs, Julian Love, and Jamal Adams. But that just adds quality depth there. That's nasty. What did I say? Rich people problems, right? And you drafted the Jerick Reed kid, too. I think has a little bit of talent there. Got my boy from Penn State there, Jonathan Sutherland. Uh, hopefully he makes the team, right? Uh, we should see there. But to me, what would set it off, though, is one more inside player, right? Draymond Jones, Jaron Reed, Mario Edwards Jr., that's nasty. Mike Morris, we don't know where he'll be talent-wise. That's that's he he has a chance to be right moving him reducing him down to a defensive end five technique type, I can dig it. Cam Young same deal right there behind a Jaron Reed, but man suppose you have one more veteran presence like a Shelby Harris, man. All right, Seattle has a nice mix of youth and veterans. You think about a guy like Bobby Wagner, you want to send him out a winner. Uh, it's good to have guys in the rotation who are veterans who you know can bring it. Shelby Harris, right? That mama jump, in my opinion, is cold. I saw where he visited the Browns, and the Browns said that he wasn't really in a hurry to get a deal and all this. My man's probably doing the veteran thing, trying to skip camp. If you can see this right here, watch this. My man taking on Trent Williams. Bang! He sleep. And look at that. Shelby, Shelby Harris right in the gap, right? You trying to run these gap schemes on him, pull him pin and pull type Jones on him not gonna happen right look at this big Trent Williams one of the best doing it one of the most physical cats and bang his head popped up at the top like Jack in the box you can see it right there he's air napping right who's air napping Harris already showed presence in that one gap right all he has to do is shed that right wall and discard right there 
Trent Williams disoriented, right? Tweety Birds and Lucky Charms and shit all like that flying over his head. He's so messed up that you can see right here, he dives at Shelby Harris. He's like, damn, is that a running back or something? Let me tackle him. He's trying to tackle Shelby Harris while Shelby Harris is tackling Christian McCaffrey right here. That drone is like a football version of a menage a trois, but you can see him change elevation right here, see? Watch, sink those hips, change elevation, get that pad level down. That's how you tackle it back like Christian McCaffrey in the hole. No gainer right there. Come on, man, your boy Shelby Harris is cold. Uh, you can see him once again working these gap schemes here. You get the center, right? He's sliding off on Shelby Harris, and then you get that H back as well, right? So you get a little bit of ping pong action right here. Shelby Harris not bothered at all. Look at the physicality this guy. Uh, uh, no thank you, and look at that. Right in on the play on Cam Akers. Look at this. Coming off the ball, obviously knows his man is re retreating, right? His man is, is vacating that gap. Meets the center head on, bang. Keeps that foot right there in that gap. Showing that presence right there in that particular gap. If anything, that will be mental pressure, right? He's still there in that gap. You have to be able to account for that. And what is my man doing right here, right? No thank you. Bang, right on his back right there. Burped the baby, cleared all that colic and gout up or whatever. That shit. I, don't think, I don't think little kids can have gout. Whatever that shit is, he cleared it all up. Burped the baby, hit him in his back. And right there, Shelby Harris. Uh, he was playing some of his best football towards the end of the year too. All right, first two plays, he was at a three technique. You can see him here at a five technique. So he's able to play all up and down the guitar string right here. You can see, bang, look at him stringing along. Still, you didn't see he got lost in the sauce and still stayed parallel. Just look what he does to bodies. He's a havoc. He's a, a complete havoc guy. He's wrecking shit out there. Look at this. Stringing it along parallel to the line of scrimmage right there, right? Keeping his gas and look at this. This is three bodies on Shelby Harris. He's tying that up and you can still see his face right here. Keying on his assignments right there. Gets rid of this dude right here. He burped him as well, right? He's burping everybody out there. Burped him, slept him, right? He fertilized himself, air fertilization, right? He had to take out a few more men. Bowling pin situation coming. Look who spins back to get into the play right here. Right, that mental pressure, Akers can see that. If Akers slides this way, it's over. So he has to try to do his best, right? Avoid that. He's trying to get through a gaps over there. Look at that, runs into traffic. He has to just eat that bad boy. And Shelby Harris right here, attack. That's hard. Come on, man. You gonna leave Shelby Harris out there? Look at my man right there. Look who makes the tackle. Come on, man. Listen, Shelby Harris, if you guys wanna really take it to the next level right there i think shelby harris is that guy add him in or, or re-add him back in with what you have now right before it was kind of a uh, add and subtract kind of thing right shelby harris still ends up back with seattle good night that shit would be hard they had an arms race with the san francisco 49ers i know you guys like to come to this channel and talk to me about my eagles but you better worry about san francisco because them boys ain't going nowhere as well a cat like shelby harris makes seattle and san francisco to me i don't know seattle as it stands right now i think improved the ra roster uh pretty much into a definitely a top 10 type roster uh cat like shelby harris with that defensive line rotation yeah, that's the next level right there. But let me know what you think about that, man. It's your boy, Jersey Murph, a.k.a. Mid-Atlantic Murph, a.k.a. The Underground King. Checking in once again, tapping in with you boys. Make sure you tip your waiter because I'll be serving that hibachi, all right? Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.